In this video, I want to show you how to compare against previous periods really easily using the same period last year DAX function. I'm going to show you how to use it step by step and also what sort of scenarios you'd use it in the first place. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's jump right into this simple demo that I prepared for you today. So here I prepared a very simple Power BI report. It has essentially two tables. One is the orders table, which just has information about orders that have been made in a fictional company. So it has details like uh, the order dates when it was ordered, unit price and quantity. The other table is just the calendar table that we created here in DAX. And it's just a table that we're going to use for all of our time intelligence calculations. So before we do anything, I just want to create a new measure just to calculate the total sales from our orders table. So as usual, I'm gonna do total sales, uh, SUMEX orders, and we're gonna do unit price multiplied by quantity. And if you're not familiar with how the SUMEX works, uh, I covered it in a separate video if you want to know more about it in detail, but for now, just follow this demo that I'm doing here. One thing I wanted to note about these two tables is that they're actually related here. Um, and this is how we are using the calendar table as a way to slice and dice time intelligence to the orders table. So this is the relation that we've set up in our Power BI report. So now let's go back to the report view and let's uh, drag in year from our calendar table here and let's drag in total sales which essentially just sums up the total sales uh, in total across those three different years that we have so now one of our requirements is to get the total sales for the previous year on each of these rows so for example in 1997 we want to have a new column on the right hand side here that will give us the total sales for the previous year of 1996 and we can do that really easily using the same period last year DAX so before we start typing the DAX measure and the calculation let's go through the documentation and see what it says so this is the documentation for the same period last year so here it says it returns a table that contains a column of dates shifted one year back in time from the dates in the specified dates column in the current context. So now you can see that you just need to provide it one parameter, which is a column containing dates and it returns a table. So a function returning table means that we can't just use it to create a measure. We need to use it with something else to change the results into a scalar value, which is sort of a, just a singular value. And to do that, we're gonna combine it with our calculate function. So let's give it a try. So let's go back to our Power BI report here and let's create a new measure. I'm gonna type total sales last year and we're gonna create a calculate function. In our calculate function, we need to define an expression. So in this case, we say we just want you to evaluate total sales. So simple as that. So for the filter context, we'll start typing same period last year. And then for the dates, we're gonna simply just use the dates column from the calendar table. If you hit enter and drag that measure into our table here, you'll see that you'll get the results, which is what exactly what we needed. So just to recap on this calculation that we've created, you'll see that we wrapped the total sales expression measure within this calculate function. So we're saying essentially evaluate the total sales the same way that you do within this measure itself except only evaluated for the same period last year. So instead of using the total sales, which is currently in the year of, let's say 1997, what it will do is it will change that filter period to show 1996 instead. And that's essentially how the same period last year function works. But now you're probably asking yourself when you would use this function. Well, for example, if you want to track growth of your sales, 
like in this case, for example, we want to track the uh, variance um, of the total sales from previous year to current year. This is what you would use as part of your calculation. So let's give it a try now. So once more, let's create a new measure. We're gonna name this one percentage change. And we're going to do a divide, simply dividing the current total sales. I believe and getting the total sales last year and I believe we need to do a minus one just to show the variance of that so we'll just drag that measure into our table here change that variance into a percentage it will be I believe measure tools percentage and there you go. So you'll see that the variance from 1996 to 1997 is 190% increase, whereas the variance between 1997 to 98 is a 28% decrease. However, you'll see that we have these minus 100% in some of these cases because we are missing one value in the equation, which is and missing last year or missing current year. So we want to just evaluate the percentage change when there are values on both sides of these measures. So we can simply do that by going back to the measure. We're going to cut this, so we're gonna keep it in the clipboard. We're gonna just wrap it within an if statement. So we want to say if the total sales and total sales last year. So you don't have to put any expression there. Uh, if you just put it there, it just assumes that as long as there is a value in there and it's not null, I want you to do the division. Something like that. So now if we hit enter, you'll see that the percentage change only gets calculated if there are values on both the total sales current year and the total sales for last year. So right now we've looked at the behavior of the same period last year function on the year time period. Let's have a look at its behavior against other time periods that we have. And at the moment I used year because it's the easiest to show and explain to you how it works. But what happens if we put this measure into a year month period instead? So let's have a look at how the table and the measures react. So let's create a grouping to show the year months together in chronological order. So we're gonna right click on the date column, new group, I'm gonna name this one year month, and the size of the bins are one month. So we drag that year month, so it gives us a chronological order of our year months, and we'll drag the total sales for each of those year months. So everything is fine, right? But now let's drag total sales last year as well. So here is where you can clearly see how the same period last year function works. So you see July 1997 shows us the total sales of 55,464 and the total sales last year, not necessarily a total of the whole of last year, but only for the same period. So July 1997, it gives you the last year, same period of 30,000 pounds, which is from the July of the same period in 1996, which is basically last year. So I hope you now see how powerful this calculation is. As long as you're comparing it against the last year, you can use whatever type of time period slice you want. And this, uh, you don't have to rewrite this function or uh, you reuse or use a different um, measure to get that. So this means that you can simply just reuse the percentage change here to see what is the percentage change against the same period of the month last year um, against this year. So let's say 1997 it gives you an 83% increase from last year's July's total sales. So let's try one more example here. Let's try to do quarters. And we're gonna try to do the same thing just to give us a chronological order. We're gonna create a new group here. We're gonna name this one quarters. The size of the bins are three months. And we're gonna drag those quarters here. 
And again, we're gonna drag in the total sales that we've created. And then once more, we're gonna try to drag the total sales last year and the percentage change, which looks like it does exactly what it's supposed to. So there you go. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to start using the same period last year DAX function to compare your values against previous year very easily. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.